Hi, I'm Victoria. This is our bus, the Wabi Sabi bus. These are my four kids, AJ, Emily, Ashley, <laughs> Kaylee, and this is Chet and Teton. Our bus is an International 3800 and it is 38 feet long. So on the outside of the bus, we have our outdoor table that the kids and I built so we can cook outside. And then on this side, we also have our diesel heater tank. We just mounted our tank here so we can siphon from our main bus tank into that. So I was a little too nervous to tap into our tank to do that. <laughs> That's Chet, our new puppy. This is our outside storage that we built in because we didn't have any. So there's large bays here and it holds our propane for the kitchen stove also. Our under storage, I had a friend help me uh, build it out. So it's all made from angle iron and sheet metal. He welded it together, but then we bolted it up to the frame of the bus. I was a little too nervous to have him weld on the bus because of the solar. I heard some things about shorting out the solar or whatever. So it is just bolted on there. And then um, we put wood doors on it. On this side of the bus, we have, first off, our camera system. That really helped me feel safe and secure on the road, being by myself or with the kids. We made sure to have that. The system that we use is uh, Blink from Amazon. This camera system is completely wireless and just connects to our router and I can magnet them anywhere on the bus to have different viewpoints. So I can see all around the bus if I hear a noise or something's making me nervous and I just check it on my phone and I get alerts and things. So that is definitely helpful. I'd highly recommend that for anybody, but definitely females or families. So. Then going down this side of the bus, we have a whole bunch more outside storage built in. This one is waterproof, so this is where I store like all my cords and my extra things I really don't want to get wet. We have our first water hookup. We have two separate ones that go to different tanks, so we'll talk about that. And then our 30 amp shore power for charging. You don't use that very often. And then this is more storage, and this houses all the kids' outdoor toys, our generator, and then gas cans and outdoor trash storage. That's big for a big family. We produce a lot of little bags and we need to get rid of them. Sometimes we're not near a garbage can, so they go outside so they're not sticking up the bus. Our solar on this side, it's three panels that are 380 watts a piece. And that just goes on the front half of our bus right in front of our uh, kayak rack. Our paint, we used Henry's Tropical on the roof and we actually ended up painting the entire bus in that when I realized how cool it made the bus. Uh, it was like 15 to 20 degrees difference instantly. So the bus was bright white. And then we got to Arizona with some friends and I was jealous all my friends had pretty colored buses. So a bus family, uh, friends of ours, helped us pick out this color and a bunch of kids and us, we all painted it with brushes in the middle of a field in Flagstaff and I emerged the blue Wabi Sabi bus. <laughs> All right, so that's the outside, and let's go on inside. This is our entryway. We needed a lot of shoe storage with all the kids. It's just a shelf that we found on the side of the road and repurposed. Our stairs we kept pretty basic. We just kind of painted it up to give it a little character, but we get a lot of water and snow and sand in here, so these just come off, and then we can just brush it all out. Makes it quick and easy with all the kids. Same thing with all this side. We kept everything pretty stock and just painted it. Made a little bit of storage here for quick access for tools and things we need as we run out the door. And then of course, <laughs> it's turned into our rock collection all up front. People think that's a little crazy, maybe a little dangerous, but we have a serious rock collecting problem. <laughs> so that's where our collection goes. The front of our bus, we wanted to have a TV for the kids to be able to do their gaming and videoing. We just mounted it on a swivel mount. It's actually got bungees on it too, so it doesn't bounce when we drive because it's a rough ride in a bus. It can swivel to wherever we want it and pull it out so we have access to the game systems back there. And then this is, yeah, like I said, our big rock collection. You're okay, Chet. And then all the controls for the bus. I deleted anything that I didn't need like flashing lights and all that that I had to remove and then added in the backup camera so I can see and a CB radio just in case emergencies if we're on the road and we don't have cell signals so we can radio to friends or radio for help of some kind. You're okay. You're all right. This is our living room space. Both of these two couches actually fold up and turn into a full bed in the front so the kids can have 
you know, they can sleep up here or they can have sleepovers with their friends. That happens a lot. I didn't expect that we'd have that many sleepovers in such a tiny space, but we fit a lot of kids in here. All this front storage area in here is uh, like all the kids' uh, craft stuff, board games, Emily's medical equipment, cat litter box. And then down here, this is our front diesel heater, but we actually have two in the bus, one up here in the front and one in the very back. Kind of helps balance out the heat in the bus and it actually makes it warm enough that we can crack windows and run the max air fan and that helps us big time with the condensation problem that everyone battles in the buses we can crank it up really high to be comfortable and really cold temperatures in colorado in the winter when we're out there but also deal with the condensation especially when it's raining and it's extra wet too in our bus build we chose not to take out our factory metal roof a lot of people ask about that a lot of people have their own opinions about it but when I took down the rails on the side and took down the speakers and looked at the insulation, it was fluffy and full, so we didn't bother taking it out. It has not been a problem to us, to my knowledge. Our biggest downfall is the single pane windows. And because we did not delete any of our windows, there's a lot of them. What we use is a thermal lining curtain and we just cut them to fit all the window sizes and they just roll down and you can definitely feel the temperature difference whether it's in sunlight or it's cold you can feel the temperature difference off of that that's really our biggest combat that we have is that window it'll condensate on there and sometimes even if it condensates a lot and then it gets really cold we just have like a whole window of ice that can be a challenge, which is why we now have two diesel heaters. Raise that temperature way up, even though you may feel like you're cooking yourself out of the bus, but then crack windows and fans to ventilate and circulate all that air. So this is our kitchen space. <laughs> New puppy. We knew that we wanted to have adequate storage for food stuff. We know how hungry all the kids get. So this is all food storage on this side. We built this in for like cups and water bottles and things in this tiny little nook that we ended up with at the end of the build. Standard size fridge, it's just a regular 110 fridge. Our toaster oven, we don't use that often anymore now. And then this is our pantry system for all of our canned goods and all that. On this side, we originally started out with just a, um, a camp stove, a propane camp stove. It was very inconvenient, so we switched to a built-in one and installed the propane tank underneath, uh, and that's definitely been a game changer. The de big downfall here is counter space, so what we actually did to deal with that is we have this leaf catch up chat. <laughs> so that leaf just stores away, and then we put this in. And now we have all this extra workspace and everyone can pass under it if they need to. We can eat here, put out food or prep here. And then it just pops back out and hides away. This is our bunk space. When it came to building the bus, the kids' bunks were actually my biggest priority to make sure that they had plenty of space for head height to make sure that they were comfortable so they enjoyed themselves. So we went as far as measuring the kids in a sitting position, measuring them in length, uh, so we made sure they had room for shelves in the end of their bunks. And because this is narrow in here, and everyone wonders why did you make your hallway so narrow, I'm obviously the largest person in here. We wanted to maximize the kids' bunk width. We came as far out as I could comfortably walk through here, which came into us building these ladders, I guess is what we call them, but they're super thin plywood with just footholds cut out so the kids can get into the top bunks but that's worked out really well for us, so. And then there's a tiny bit of storage under here. It's about like eight inches tall. We just keep some off-season extra stuff in there because it's not super convenient to get to, but they just lift up on top. And <laughs> we did have trim here, but again, with that whole condensation and airflow problem in bus builds, this was a huge cold zone, and when that cold air was sitting under the bunks, it made the kids cold and there was moisture. So we just removed all this wood, and now that all that air moves around under there, we don't have that problem anymore. So These are our two hallway closets. This is all the storage for the kids' clothes in the bus. They each have two crates, and then hanging storage stuff, and that's 
it. <laughs> That's about how much clothes one of our preteen girls had before. So they really downsized. And then these doors are multi-purpose for bathroom and for uh, hallway closets. So they just kind of slide back and forth on that track system. You're okay. And then this is our shower and toilet in this side. So it's just a stand-up shower and we use curtains to go around ours. The metal's just for looks. <laughs> but, and then we have a DIY composting toilet with a urine diverter in here. We actually tried like four toilet systems. We didn't like any of them. Uh, they were pricey, they didn't work, the angles were not right for kids, all that stuff. That one just, it works super easy. We just deal with it every day. It goes out into a separate tank. It's perfect. You, what are you getting into? <laughs> and then on this side of the hall is actually our sink bathroom with a second toilet. And we get a lot of interest in that because apparently no one else has put two toilets in a bus, but it just made sense to us. You're okay just made sense to us uh, coming from a large house and having several bathrooms. Kids always need to go to the bathroom at the same time. I don't know what that phenomenon is, but that's all I envisioned as a mom. I was like, we need more than one toilet. And because I like building with symmetry for whatever reason, it just worked out that way. And I was like, we totally have room for two toilets. So we have two toilets. This is the back bedroom, my room. <laughs> We kind of use it as a multifunction space, uh, you know, extra family space and my room, but it's changed multiple times. It used to be two big couches that converted into a bed. I thought that converting the bed was not going to be an issue, but I just didn't like it. So I went with an actual memory foam mattress and now it's a fixed bed, but it does lift up and underneath this side is all of my solar. And then on this side over here is our water. So water heater, uh, pump, okay, all that stuff. And then behind the bedroom doors here is tall cabinets and that's where I put all my clothes in the back. The bed is a queen size. So it gives us a little gap at the end for storage for blankets and things, which is nice. It always just seems to fall together and give you all these neat little perks. On this side underneath here also is our diesel heater that we had recently added in. So that just helps balance out that heat from front to back. My battery bank in the bus here is four uh, Battleborn 100 amp hours. It's a 24 volt system, so it's 200 amp hours at 24 volts. So we have a 24 volt uh, Victron inverter charger in here. And then we also have a 24 to 12 volt converter. So we have a bus bar that runs anything that's 12 volt in the bus. And we also run off a, a Sterling DC charger so that that runs off the bus alternator so we can charge the solar while driving. I learned that early on we had a big solar failure with a different system, a different company. So we drove around not having any power. So having that DC charger added in really helped us. And now we can top it off and run the bus as it is a generator. So if like overcast rainy days like this, we can just run that and charge the bus or I can pull out our generator and hook it up to the shore power and charge it. So we have multiple sources for power so we don't have to worry about that. You're okay. The fresh water tank in the bus is under here actually and we just upgraded that. We did travel for the first year with just 55 gallons, which surprises a lot of people for a large family, but we just upgraded it to 125. Yeah, we feel pretty rich in water. <laughs> if you're a nomad, water is like a big deal. That tank is huge. It runs almost from window to window, minus where the inverter is, but it's a large tank and we can just fill that from outside. And then I can view it from in here underneath the bed just to see quick where our water level is at. Something else that we had recently switched to, and I know a lot of people, because they always ask about toilet systems and buses, is that we use the DIY bucket system in ours with the ger German urine diverter. A lot of people do urine collection in jugs and dump it. We needed a lot more volume than that. So we actually build in a dedicated urine holding tank in our bus. So we just go to RV dump sites and dump that. That seems to work out the best for us. And we actually have met a few bus friends who do some similar things to that. I don't know if that's just specific to large families, but 
that works pretty well if you have more than just a couple people we found. We have been full-time living in the bus for 18 months now. That's when we sold our house back in New York and we've been living in it but we've been actually on the road for 16 months now. We very specifically invested quite a bit of money into our solar and I think for me or maybe for some other people like knowing that you have reliable power is big to me. That makes me feel safe and comfortable. My kids are happy and comfortable. They're warm. They have their games, not to be petty, but we have lights. Our fridge is on and our, our food is taken care of. That is stressful to me if we don't have power. So that I would say a lot of people think it's crazy that I put 7,000 into our solar, but that was like a big deal breaker to me. Like that money had to be spent. We wanted to feel secure to be full time. It's not like we're just out on you know weekends and summers or whatever this is full-time home so we really wanted that security so to us solar is huge yeah i would say anybody that wants to do this and thinks that maybe you can't because you have kids is absolutely do it anyways what's the worst case scenario the kids bicker my kids bickered in a big house too with their own bedrooms we have more fun and they figure out how to get along now but really just taking the chance to get out there worst case scenario you hate it and you're miserable you go back and you buy a house again but at least you went out and tried it either one you fall in love and you love it it was the best decision you ever made or you had a good time made good memories and then you go back to a house so if you're questioning it the answer is absolutely yes you need to go try it our total bus build totaled up to 28,000 4,000 of it was the bus purchase itself. 2,500 initially was like mechanical stuff that we needed to get done, kingpins and such. And then the rest was the build out. In all fairness in there, one, a big expense of ours obviously was solar again. But I also bought a lot of tools and things like that. We bought a lot of stuff, you know, new, like the new fridge, things like that. I think we could have done it for a little bit cheaper, but during COVID, some things were hard to source and find too. So we had to drive further. I had to buy very large quantities of hardware or something. And then all of a sudden it would compensate and we would find cupboards that I thought I was gonna build, but they were busted at the bottom and I paid 60 for all of them. <laughs> so it kind of balances itself out, but yeah, 28,000 for the entire build as it is. For income on the road, I know that's number one question and it varies greatly. For us, I'm lucky enough that we get child support um, every week so we do live off of that and also the income from my ebay business that i run we sell handmade goods and vintage clothing actually i've been into that for about six years now so that does well for us but this lifestyle does not require very much fuel maintenance and groceries we go through a lot of groceries in this bus I'm Victoria and this is our bus, the Wabi Sabi bus. You can follow our journey on Instagram and Facebook at Wabi Sabi bus. And we also have a website that updates our travels, links to our Etsy shop, our eBay shop, all that stuff. And that's wabisabibus.com.